Hey guys, it's Ed. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're doing something a little bit differently. I've been commissioned to make a dessert, so I thought I'd show you how to make it. Today we're making parry breast, and trust me, it's not as difficult as it looks. So a parry breast is one of the classics of French patisserie, and it's basically a ring of choux pastry filled with a praline flavoured creme mousseline, which is basically a slightly modified version of a pastry cream, and it's really not that difficult at all. All we're going to need for the ingredients are some butter, some salt, some sugar, milk, water and eggs, and then some plain flour, and then to coat the shoe we're also going to use some nibbed roasted hazelnuts. So, shoe is a really basic, really classic recipe. This is a modified version from the uh, recipe that appears in my book, Petition Made Simple. I'm just making it at a different scale so the recipe is ever so slightly different. All we're going to do is add our milk and our water to the pan along with our sugar and our salt and then the butter. The butter needs to be in nice small pieces so that it melts nice and quickly. So add that to the pan as well. That's then going to go over the heat at a medium high heat and we're going to cook that until the butter has melted and then the whole thing comes to a boil. Once our butter mixture has come to the bowl, we're going to add the flour all in one go. And then working quickly, we're going to stir that together. At first it will look a little bit like cottage cheese or scrambled egg, but it will come together to form a dough. And as soon as it forms that dough, we're going to get that back on the heat and cook that for about two to three minutes or until it forms a skin on the bottom of the pan. So once you have that film, we're going to add that straight to our mixer bowl. So when you are adding the egg, the recipe is always a guide. You want to add enough until it forms the right texture. What I'm going to show you now is what it looks like when there's not enough egg and you can tell because it's too dry and the dough rips really easily. You can see that it doesn't have any glossiness to it, it doesn't have any shine and it's super brittle. At this stage we're going to add the egg just a little bit at a time to prevent it from becoming a too wet and unusable dough. So when the dough is at the right texture you can tell because it will form a really nice V-shaped ribbon, it will have a slight gloss to it, but it's not so liquid that it won't hold its shape when it's piped. That's exactly what you're looking for. Now that the shoe pastry is made, we're going to pop that into a disposable piping bag. Now, I am using one of these. This is what's known as a French starter. It's lots of very fine cuts around the outside and the reason for that is shoe conforms to the shape that it's piped so with more surface area from the star tip shape it means it will rise better and we get a nicer more open shoe pastry result. So let's pop this into the piping bag. What I'm going to do is place it inside like this and then we're just going to unfold it over the outside like so. And the reason for that is it means we can use both of our hands to scrape the pastry into there. Now, there are two ways to prevent the shoe from falling out. We can either just take your finger, press the bag inside like that, so that we can't push down, and then all you need to do is just pull it out like that, and it will fall out and you can pipe it as normal. Or, my favorite way is to use a sandwich bag clip, just place over the bag, clip like that, can't fall out. Pour it into our piping bag like this. Now, as I said, this is making a lot more than you would possibly normally make at home. I am making quite a bit of shoe. So, fill the bag about two thirds full at the most, just because that's when it gets a little bit tricky to work with. So, we're just going to tighten that bag. Also, like to press down on the shoe a little bit, just trying to eliminate any possible air pockets because we don't really want those to appear when we pipe the mixture. 
So we've lined two baking sheets with parchment paper and I've just placed a little bit of the shoe pastry in the corners so that it doesn't move when we pipe our mixture on. To mark the shape of our shoe, to give us a template, we're gonna use just a round cookie cutter and we're just gonna dip it in flour and dip that where we want to pipe our shapes. And then to pipe it, we take off our clip, make sure the bag is really nice and taut just because it's a lot easier to control and then we're going to work straight down and pipe our circles so don't pull on the bag let it drape out naturally try and follow the template as good as you can and when you get to the end stop piping and then just pull to finish that like so so just pipe along letting it naturally drape out at its own speed and then when you get to the other end stop piping and just pull so that it naturally joins together. And then to finish our rings of pastry, we're just going to sprinkle them liberally with our chopped hazelnuts. This will also help them rise really nice and evenly, but also give some nice texture and obviously extra flavor as well. So once we've sprinkled the shoe pastry rings with our hazelnuts, we can get those in the oven. And that's an oven that's been preheated to 180 degrees Celsius. And they're gonna go in there for about 30 minutes or so until they're a nice golden brown. And then let's like, turn the oven off and leave the shoe in there for about 10 to 15 minutes just to cool down in the oven to help them dry out slightly. Then I'm gonna set those aside and we can work on our filling. Now the filling is what's known as a creme mousseline. It's kind of a cross between a pastry cream and a buttercream. It's basically a pastry cream with a lot more butter in it and we can whip it to give it that buttercream like texture. And we're gonna flavor that with the classic praline paste, which in this case is gonna be a mix of hazelnuts and sugar. Now you can make this yourself using a food processor, but if you want a really professional version, it's very hard to get a super smooth praline at home unless you've got a very high powered blender. So I prefer to buy that as a product. It's just easier, it's quicker, and the taste is really, really good. So for the creme mousseline, all we're gonna need is some unsalted butter, some caster sugar, corn flour, milk, and then some egg yolks. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our milk, add that to a large saucepan and place that over the heat and bring that to a boil. Now whilst that's coming to a boil, we're gonna work on our eggs. So to that, we're gonna add our sugar and our corn flour. We're just gonna whisk that together to make a thick paste. Once our milk mixture is at the boil, we can just pour that into our yolk mixture. Just making sure we whisk straight away to prevent the egg from curdling. And then gonna pour the custard back into the pan. And then whisking constantly, cook until very thick. So whilst the custard's still hot, we're just gonna add a small portion of the butter and then just stir that together until combined. At this stage, we need to chill the pastry cream down for a couple of hours in the fridge until it's fully set. And then it's basically a matter of combining our pastry cream with our butter and our praline paste. Okay, so now that our pastry cream is nice and Firm. It'll almost be kind of like a jelly, like a really thick jelly. All we're gonna do is, using a whisk, we're just gonna beat that together just to loosen it, bring it back to a smooth consistency. We're then gonna place the remainder of our butter in a stand mixer or using an electric hand mixer, and we're gonna beat that until it's really nice and creamy. It's really important that the butter is at room temperature and that the butter comes to this really nice soft texture. Otherwise, we'll end up with lumps in the finished mousseline. Then we're gonna add our praline paste to the mixer, beat that until that's fully combined, and then it's just a matter of combining our two mixtures. So what I like to do is add about a third of the pastry cream at a time, beating until that's fully combined, and that again just prevents any lumps from forming. Now at this stage, if it's a little on the loose side, you can pop that in the fridge for a while, but you should have formed a really nice, beautiful, almost buttercream-like texture. And that is what we're gonna use to fill our shoe pastry. 
So to finish the Pari breast, we've got the creme mousseline filling in the same sort of piping bag with a slightly smaller version of the star tip. And then all we're gonna do is we've sliced these open with a serrated knife. And then we're just gonna pipe a layer of uh, our filling in the bottom. But just to add a little extra, and this is optional, but we've taken some of the praline and we're just gonna pipe a nice ring of it around the bottom. And that's just gonna intensify that hazelnut flavor, but that bit is completely optional. And then all we're gonna do is pipe our mousseline filling into the pie breast. And then top that with our disc of shoe pastry. Okay. So with the final dusting of icing sugar, that is the Pari breast finished. I know it seems a little complex, but trust me, it's only two elements and it is definitely achievable at home. As always, the recipe is up in the corner. I would love to know what your favorite French dessert or pastry is, so leave me a comment down below. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I make new videos every single week. And until next week, I'll see you later.